everyone, it's Anya here at Our Gable at Home, where I like to share tips for a simple, beautiful, healthy, and sustainable living. And in today's video, I'm so excited to share our new kitchen with you, our new farmhouse kitchen that has taken the longest time to do. And even though we're not entirely done, we still have some details to finish. Obviously, there's a light here that we haven't done, and we have these... Um, cords hanging here so there's a few more details but on the whole i'm pretty happy to share and let me show you what we did So our old kitchen was probably put in in the 1930s or 40s and we know that because it had knob and tube and lath and plaster and they stopped using that at the very latest in the 50s. So we know that it was from the 30s and 40s and the plywood cabinets were very ratty looking. It had a very inefficient layout. We uh, felt like we couldn't maximize the space in this kitchen. Um, the windows had been painted shut. Can you imagine a kitchen in which you can't open the windows? So they have been painted shut. And then we have a big oak tree out of this window that could be more than 100 years old. And the roots had been pushing up the concrete floor. So the floor was at an angle and wavy in itself, which gave you a really interesting feeling when you walked around in the kitchen. It also pushed up the track for the sliding door to the outside. So you could, at some point it was so bad that we couldn't even really open the sliding door to the outside. We also had very few outlets. So we had to run extension cords and on the whole, it just wasn't a very efficient kitchen. So the goal with this new kitchen was that we create a kitchen that has the look and feel that matches the rest of the house. And even though it is a new kitchen, it looks like it could have always been here. So we wanted it to have a nod to the past. We also wanted to maximize this space. This is a medium sized kitchen. So it's not a lot of space, but I always felt like there's so much more we could do with this space. We also wanted more outlets. We um, wanted to update everything. We wanted to move the refrigerator from this wall to this wall. And while we were thinking about what to do in here, we were considering opening this wall to the dining room that's on the other side. And that would have been kind of nice in that somebody could have been here and cooking and it would have been really nice for entertaining. It would have been very open, but I think it would have been more modern than would work with the rest of the house. And we also, and this was my biggest reason against opening the wall was that we would have lost all this wall space. Now we have two big windows on either side and we have now French doors going out behind the camera and then we wouldn't have had a lot of wall space. So we decided to keep the wall so that we can have these upper cabinets here and also not lose the wall space in the dining room. We ripped basically everything out. We ripped out the floor, we ripped out the walls, we took out the ceiling, we took out the sliding door that was back there. Uh, we had to cut the windows open with putty knives to cut through layers of paint. And we did all the work ourselves. Mostly my husband did all the work. So he updated the plumbing, which was basically crumbling as he took it out. And that was a good thing we did that because that would have probably caused big leaks at some point anyways. We updated all the electrical. We put in a lot more outlets and switches. We um, moved gas lines over here so that we could have the gas stove over on this side versus where it was sitting before. And we put in a new ceiling. So for all the, the things in the kitchen, I'm leaving links in the description box below so you can find where we got what we put in the kitchen. So first of all, we painted the walls in ferro and ball. 
all white. Now, Ferro and Ball is not an expensive paint, but it has a reputation of lasting really long and it has a really pigment rich um, color. So um, when we chose the white, we wanted a white that didn't make all the other whites that we have in our kitchen look off. Now we have this grayish bluish white of the counters. We have the off white of the kitchen cabinets and we have the white of the window and door trim that matches the trim in the rest of the house. And so we just needed a white that didn't make all the other whites look off. And the all white, fair and ball, all white just does that. It's a really beautiful color and I think it's so worth the extra expense. Plus it wasn't a whole lot of wall space anyways. Now for the floors, we put in engineered wood in, in an oak color that works actually really well with the fur floors, the original fur, duck fur floors of the rest of the house. And I might've liked to put in wood floors, but one consideration was if there's ever a leak with our dishwasher, it's gonna ruin the wood floors and then we're gonna have to rip that all back out and nobody wants to do that. So we decided for a little bit more low maintenance and water resistant engineered wood floors. For the kitchen cabinets, we chose Ikea. And this is about the third kitchen in my life that is Ikea. Ikea has come a long way. And I think that you just cannot beat the value, the price versus what you get. Um, the door style we chose, it's the Bodbin Off-White because it matches all the interior doors in the rest of our house. So it looks like it could have been here. I love the soft close feature of the doors. And I absolutely love the soft close feature of the drawers and the interior doors that maximizes the space in the doors. We also chose to pretty much only have door, drawers and the bottom cabinets. I feel like it maximizes the space. You can access stuff much better than having to crawl into the lower cabinets. And I think it's also very period sensitive. So when you use Ikea cabinets, they can sometimes look very boxy and Ikea-ish. I'll be doing another video in which I will share a few custom things that we did to make our kitchen not look so Ikea. So stay tuned for that. The counters are quartz. I really wanted marble because I love the look and the feel of marble. It has a softness. That's also one of the reasons why people don't like marble because it's not very low maintenance. And I must have visited eight different dealers one day when I was driving around and looking at slabs out there and I couldn't find a slab that I really liked. They either had super dramatic veining that I thought would just overpower the look of this kitchen or it had an, a tint that I didn't like. But then I found one demo counter and I fell immediately in love with it. I asked what it was and it's MSI Carrara Grigio. Again, it's the link is below. It is a marble lookalike. I absolutely love the veining. It doesn't look manufactured at all. It looks very natural and we could not be happier with the quartz counters that we put in our kitchen. Plus they're really low maintenance and rugged. So that's a plus. For the sink, we put in the Ikea farmhouse sink. Um, I, it's a double bowl. I love that I can drain dishes on one side and splatter around on the other side. Uh, we still have a little bit of counter space behind it, which is really nice where we have our faucet. It's a vintage looking faucet with very traditional two levers, but it's absolutely beautiful and it complements the farmhouse look of the sink. For the hardware, we chose just very simple knobs, but we actually started with the bin poles for the drawers. They look 
pretty much exactly like the bin poles that we found in this house when we moved in. Um, they are a stamped brass, which wouldn't have looked so great in this kitchen. So we found a company that makes these in a brushed stainless steel. And then we just chose regular knobs for the doors that match this look. Nothing says farmhouse as much as subway tile. We put those in and a very pure white, very classic, nothing fancy about that. We chose a silver shadow grout that is not a white. White might have looked really nice in the beginning, but I was worried that over time with a lot of cooking and inevitable splattering, it might just look yellowish and off after a while and not be so easy to clean. So this color actually absorbs stain fairly easily and will never look dirty or dingy. For the lights, we have a three light fixture over our little kitchen table and we have matching individual light, single lights over the sink and the counter space right there. I really like the feminine tulip look of the lights and the frosted shades. They give this, um, like I said, just a more of a feminine look. On this wall over here, we have our custom built cast iron wall rack, which I have done a video about how we exactly installed it. I absolutely love it. It's very accessible. I can find whatever I need. I don't need to open doors and move a bunch of other things to access my cast iron. Actually, I use it pretty much every single day for bread baking and for frying things in the skillets. Um, but it's great that they have a place where it's airy so they don't get moist or moldy at all. This was a stove that we've had for over 10 years. And while I absolutely love this Bosch range for two features, it has a simmer function and you can set the oven to 100 degrees so I can make yogurt in it and ferment things in it. But we really have thought about putting a vintage stove in and we, both my husband and I really like the Wedgwoods or the O'Keefe and Merritt stoves, but the nicer ones are 36 inches wide. And again, we consider that for a long time, but then we thought that we would lose valuable counter space and valuable uh, cabinet space down below. So we decided against one of those vintage stoves. If I ever in my lifetime get a bigger kitchen where I could have a vintage stove, I will. Everything in this kitchen is supposed to be functional because there's a lot of cooking and fermenting and baking going on in this kitchen. So I wanted a lot of counter space. I wanted everything to have a function. There's no real frills. This is a working kitchen in which we make real food all the time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you're new on my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I upload new video every week. You can also hit that little bell button to be getting an alert when there is a new video. You can also go to my blog, OurGabledHome.com, where I have more tips and recipes. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.